Right, so we're going to look at an object on a slope. So a slope will have a specific angle, the object will have a mass. Now because it um, has a mass, we're going to start with something with no movement. Okay, gravity acts in the same direction, down. But the normal force, as we've explained before, is always going to be perpendicular to the slope. So it looks like it's at a funny angle compared to the force of gravity, but it's actually not. It's still at a normal angle. Force of friction will go up the slope, and because it is not moving, it is going to be a static frictional force. Okay, now let's have a look at breaking this down into a free body diagram. So as a free body diagram, we have the force of friction going up, we have the for normal force going perpendicular to the slope, and we have the force of gravity going down. Now, the problem with this situation is that now none of these forces are acting in opposite directions to another. That means we have to break them into their components. It doesn't make sense to break Fs and Fn into a component that is um, in the same direction as Fg, rather break Fg into the components opposite of Fn and Fs. So that means we go into a parallel component with the plane and a perpendicular component to the plane. So therefore we call that Fg parallel and Fg perpendicular. All right. Now by completing this little quadrilateral. Now we can say that this angle in the corner is equal to theta. I'm not going to go into the maths to prove that, but you can always ask when your teacher, if it comes down to it. But now that we have broken Fg into its components, now we can actually use Fg and Fs to subtract from one another, and Fg perpendicular and Fn to subtract from one another. Okay, now the main reason why we can do this is that remember the resultant force. Resultant force is a, is one, a single force with the same effect as two other forces. We can do the opposite. We can take one force and break it down into the component of two different forces. So that means you can break it into these two and now they are acting opposite to one another. Okay, now what happens if we have an object which is moving down the slope, say it's slipping? Well, that just means that the force of gravity that is perpendicular, parallel to the slope, is greater than the force of friction, giving us Fk. And Fg perpendicular will always be equal to Fn, in most cases due to the fact that it is not moving into the slope, it is just going down. So this is the force which in the end will make it go down the slope. Okay, that's about it.